Arthur Ress is America. Giving all praise to you, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakwadash. I'm going to make this very quick. Uh, yesterday at the camp, you know, we had a, a bunch of brothers out there, uh, maybe about 20, 20 brothers that uh, came out in the audience. And um, we were going through, we were speaking on, uh, was that Second Kings, the uh, 17th chapter, then it led to, uh, there was another scripture, it was another, no, it was, I'm sorry, it was Jeremiah 50, that, uh, I'm not going to read it. But in Jeremiah 50, I believe it's around the fourth verse. It speaks about the um, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel was were oppressed. The Israelites, Judah and Israel, were oppressed together. And that oppression came when they were over here in the Americas. When you go to, uh, as a matter of fact, I'll go to it. This is a uh, second Ezra, or Ezra's, which is a Greek way of saying Ezra. Um, the thirteenth chapter and the fortieth verse. I'm just looking through it. Okay, I'm gonna go to the fortieth verse. So, when you go to the first verse, it speaks about the Lord coming back on a gigantic ship along with the angels and um, how he's going to destroy his enemies and our enemies. And that's going to be done in America because America is ultimately going to be destroyed, Babylon the Great. And then it kind of it jumps back in time to when the the, the northern kingdom uh, came back um, was already here and it says how the rest of the brethren shall meet with them I read it I'm gonna read it I'm just saying that uh loosely saying that paraphrasing but I'm gonna actually read it so what I did was I asked the brothers out there, uh, what does Asareth mean? And none of them knew. I mean, not that it's a big deal. They, sh they should know. They're somewhat new. And I believe one brother did know. And we had went to, uh, I said, go back to Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. I meant to say 29, verse 28. And it actually says, Let me go to that. You know, it's good to check out those words. Okay, Deuteronomy. Where we at? Deuteronomy 29. And 28. Verse 28. It says uh, 27. Deuteronomy 29 verse 27. It says, And and the anger of Yahweh was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord Yahweh rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day it, the word another land actually translates into the word asara asarath but i'm going to read it actually in the actual hebrew So 
See, to get these mysteries, you got to know these words. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay, the word land is Arataza, and, and another is Akarath. Akarath. So, Akarath, the, uh, pro the, what is it, the subject is always the uh, prefix of, of a bigger word. It's, a, it's two words. So, so it would be, it'd be read, uh, um, land another. That's how it would be understood if you read it in the Hebrew. Land another. Not another land, but land another. Because the word land is the uh, subject. So let's read again. Arataza Akharath, which is come back over here. It says those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of the their own land. That's when um, the Syrian king uh Shalabadesa the fifth uh took over the uh the kingdom of Israel. And um the kingdom of Judah didn't give a shit because there was a split there, so they became enemies. It says um their own land in the time of Hosea the king that go back to second Kings uh, what is that? Second Kings seventeen. You can read that whole chapter. Whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. And so you can understand the history. The Assyrians wanted to take down both kingdoms, but it it could never take down Judah. Judah always fought. The kingdom of Judah always fought their way. Out of being captive, but they wound up getting the northern kingdom. It says, King of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. That other land is um, Assyria. It says, But but they took this counsel among themselves that they should, would leave the multitude of the heathen, which were the Assyrians in particular and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt so you got guys saying that they went into Africa they didn't go into Africa because there were people dwelling Hamites were dwelling in the land of Africa now you might get stupid and say well look, they, nobody dwelt in, in uh, West Africa That country, which they call a continent, continent, country. The scriptures don't use the word continent. They'll use country. Like America is a country, but it's also a continent. Look it up. So that country that they went to is the land of Africa. Where never mankind uh, dwelt. So what what land did never mankind dwelt? Over here in the Americas. So that Saturday, yesterday, we went through the... Uh, I, I, I asked, I said, well, where's that? Get, give me that real quick about Solomon's Navy. So um, I think, I believe, I believe it was Apostle Ramlob that read it. And where he was going, had, his, had uh, Hiram... And the Canaanites and even other Israelites go back and forth to the Americas because they would were, they were bring him back precious things from America. Gold, uh, spices, apes, peacocks. But they never dwelt there. So that's, that's the, where never mankind dwelt. Why did they know to go to a further country? Because they knew about Solomon going back and forth to America that's how he became uh, rich 
It said, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. That's America. That they might keep they keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. They kept going off. So he said, when we go to this new land, we're going to keep the laws right. Which this is a fulfillment of Deuteronomy 29, verse 28, 27 and 28. For the most high then showed sign for them and held them held still the flood till they were passed over. Because this is a fulfillment of prophecy. 45th verse. For through that country there was a great way to go namely a year and a half and now in countries you have bodies of water you have lakes you have rivers you have you have many bodies of waters so like I said the word country is talking about going over land and going over uh, waters it says for through that country there was a great way to go namely a year and a half and the same region is called Arsereth which is a Hebrew word let me go back to it you read it backward you read land another Aratazah land Acharath, another. So now let's go back to here. This is the Bible, Bible gate. So these Edomites, they they know. It says, uh, as you can see, Asharath, which means land, another. Or oh, they they turn around go another land but it should be land another a region behind beyond the river you the Euphrates River to which the Assyrians supposedly took the ten tribes after the destruction of the northern kingdom and from which it was expected that they will return in the last days so we hear in the last days Let's read on from uh, 40, let's read 45, no, let's read 46. Then dwelt they there until the latter times. What does it, what does it mean by the latter times? This, this time now. And now when they shall begin to come. Now when they shall begin, begin to come is who? When uh, the kingdom of Judah came over here by way of slave slave ships, Deuteronomy twenty eight verse sixty eight. It says the the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. The day may may go through are the um. The, the, the would be the tribe the the, um, the kingdom of Judah. Therefore, source thou the multitude with peace. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. So you had Israelites <coughs> that were still in the Middle East, in parts of Africa, in Europe. Remember, the seven ch churches of Asia Minor is up there in Europe. So what is what is being said right here in the 48th verse? It says, But those that be left behind of thy people, the Israelites, are they that are found within my borders, Israel. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, that's when Yahushua comes and goes to war, that war in heaven. <coughs> he shall defend his people, the Israelites, that remain. So if you're over here in America, you're part of the elect, you're going to be defended by being beamed up. And then, 50th verse, and then show, he showed them great wonders. 
Most the Lord the Lord it says in Isaiah 47, he shall not meet you as a man. Fifty first verse, I gotta read a little bit more. Then said I, O Lord, yeah, O Lord, that beareth rule, show me this, wherefore have shoo, shoo me this, wherefore have I seen the man coming up from the midst of the sea. Did he come from the midst of the sea? No, he came from out of space. Let's see what 52 says. And he said unto me, like as, the, like as thou canst neither seek out nor know the things that are in the deep of the sea, which is space, because he ain't coming out of no water. Now some simple ass nigga come up, see, the Lord is going to come up out of the ocean. Sea represents space. And it says uh, the beast came came up in Daniel seven. The beast came out of the sea, right? They didn't come out of no sea. They came, they they formed themselves. This is parabol parabolic. Even so, can no man upon earth see my son, or that or those that be with him, but in the daytime, because he's going to come in the daytime. It says, all, all shall see. The tribes of the earth shall mourn. It says, this is the interpretation of the dream which thou sawest, and whereby thou only art here lightened. Oh, that's all I got to read. So, the, 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 um, the, uh, the northern kingdom... Came over here to the Americas. They didn't go to Africa. You had some Israelites. We just read this. That stayed. In the Middle East. When I say.